Hi class, welcome to week one of History 103, U.S. History to 1877. Uh, the theme of my video today is history. Who cares? Uh, so just to remind you that I am a real human being, not a robot. I've put over here on my screen a picture of me, my husband, and our dog, uh, whose name is Mango Jalapeno. I will leave it to you to figure out which, which entity in this picture is me, which is my husband, and which is the dog. Uh -huh. uh, then I have this shrug emoji here because we're thinking about history. Who cares? Why should you care? I think you should care. Uh, so what we're going to do today, I'm going to introduce the concept of history. Who cares? Um, then I'm going to really briefly uh, go from sort of the conceptual level to the day-to-day -day basic level. What do you need to be doing in the class? So we're going to look ahead to week one and week two and then to essay one. Uh, so we'll do that. Then we'll come back into week one and uh, I'll go through the assignments just a little bit with you, those week one assignments. So that's what we're doing here now. So, number one, introduce the concept of history. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, why should you care? I know you, you probably have to take this class for some reason or another. I'm so happy you're here. I love teaching history. I love teaching history um, sort of in the context of teaching it to people who maybe need to be sold a little bit. Why they should care. So let me just talk a little bit about that here. Uh, basically, what I think, what most other historians, academic historians, uh, kind of what we're circling around to is that in a context like this, where we're teaching American history in the United States of America to students who either are American or for whatever reason are in the United States completing their college education at an American university. What we kind of think a lot about is that really our identity, in terms of when we think of who we are, what we are, um, our identity is really the sum of the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. And uh, my friends in psychology, sociology, etc. They, they'll tell you, they tell me, that that's also true at the individual level. So when I think about myself, who am I? What, what is my sense of self? Where does that come from? It's really kind of a collection of, of memories, which I have shaped into stories I tell myself about who I am. Well, that's also true collectively. Um, at the level where we talk about not just one person, but more than one person, the kind of we level. If you think about it, I'm sure you can um, think of stories that your family maybe has about who you all are as sort of a family. Um, we tell ourselves stories, uh, my friends who are Pittsburgh Steelers fans, right? They tell themselves a story about what it means to be a Steelers fan. Uh, similarly, at the national level, we see that too. Uh, and a great example of that is something like the 4th of July. What are we doing on the 4th of July? I mean, we're, you know, going to barbecues, fireworks displays, but another kind of way of thinking about the 4th of July is as a ritualistic celebration of our national origin story. So, okay, so how we think about the past influences how we think about the present and vice versa. Um, it sounds sort of abstract, but a really great example we have of that that's happened more recently has been these controversies about uh, statues of Confederate figures, which are most common in the American South. Uh, should the statues stay up? Should they go down? What should happen with those statues? The statues made sense for the people who put them up. That happened actually not right after the Civil War. It happened about 100 years ago most of the time. Uh, at that time, it made sense to put these statues up. For today's uh, generation, some people think it makes sense to keep them up, some people not. 
I mean, you're welcome to your own opinion about that. I'm not here to tell you what to think about that, really. But I am here to say that the reason people get upset about it, it's a controversy, uh, people can't all agree about it, is that those statues are telling a story about the past, and that story doesn't quite resonate in the same way today that it did several generations ago. That's just one way of thinking about how and why people care about the past. So, okay, I think you should care about the past too. I think that, uh, you know, we can all sort of sit around and have uninformed opinions where we're upset, we're yelling, or we can find out the facts for ourselves, find out as much information as we can and make maybe informed decisions from there. So uh, one of the things you'll be talking about for week one in our class is a controversy not about Confederate statues, but about Christopher Columbus. So we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but let me just move on now to tell you uh, just some business items for to make sure that you are taken care of in week one of our class. Number one, have you completed the introductory activities on our course page? I think they're fairly self-explanatory. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, number two, do you have the course books? Uh, again, that information is available to you, which books, etc. That's on the course map. Uh, if you don't have the books, you need them ASAP, especially a people's history of the United States. That's the one you need first. So um, week one and week two, we have the same basic assignments due in both weeks. First off, you have your initial discussion board posting that's on the discussion board. It's linked under week one. Um, actually, let me see here. Here it is. So here, wow, here's our course page. Um, <clears throat> and here is our very first discussion. So all you need to do for this is write your initial post, which is due Thursday, and you need to make follow-up posts due Sunday, which are due Sunday. For your initial post, I want you to write about what event topic or theme from the readings did you find most interesting or surprising and why? And then uh, what event, topic, or theme from the readings are you most confused about? For your follow-up posts, I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to say you only need to reply to two classmates. Sorry for the confusion. Um, but anyway, so for your follow-up posts, I want you to reply to not four, sorry, but two classmates and try to help them with their confusion, if you can. So that's your week one discussion assignment. So you will want to do some of the readings before you post about that. Um, I'll go through these other assignments, the reading outline one and the journal one in just a second. But I just want to sort of note here that so for week two, you'll have base, the same basic assignments do. Um, and then I want to draw your attention to essay one, which is due um, right in the sort of the middle of week three. But essay one is about weeks one and two. And if you look on our Canvas page, you can see the essay one assignment. I'm going to pull it over here now. I just want to draw your attention to the essay one question. How has American exceptionalism which you will learn about next week in week two. But the question is, how has American exceptionalism influenced the ways in which Americans remember the history of the colonial era? Do you think this influence is beneficial? Why or why not? So in this whole week one and week two, we're really mostly going to be focused on the colonial era, which is the time period in American history before the American Revolution. And what I want you to be thinking about is not just what happened, but the ways in which we remember what happened. 
So that's just something for you to start thinking about now. And what I'll do here is I'll make a new slide to define colonial era. That's what we call the time period in American history before the American Revolution. That's because, um, of course, um, the colonies were still just that. They were still colonies in the colonial era. You could probably, a good time to start it would be 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And a good time to end it might be 1776 with the Declaration of Independence. That's the colonial era. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back uh, to week one, taking care of business. And now I'm going to go and talk to you a little bit about reading outline one. Your first assignment. Reading outline one, you're answering reading questions for a PDF I've put up, which is an excerpt of a Patriot's History of the United States, and then chapter one of a People's History of the United States. And what you're going to catch on to really, really quickly is that these are two books with very different interpretations of of American history generally and specifically the early colonial time period. So here's the reading outline, one assignment. Here's the PDF. I want you to read, um, I want you to start by going to the website from, for this book. I didn't have you read the whole book or buy it, but it has a website. I've given you a PDF of part of the book here. Just want you to check out the website, answer this question, come up with a citation for the book. Do your best. This is practice. We're practicing. I want you to uh, look at the PDF and then answer these questions. Then, totally different interpretation is Zen's A People's History of the United States. That's our course book. If you don't have it yet, there is a website where you can read it, but you do need to buy the book because you need to cite page numbers. Answer these reading questions. Boom. That's reading outline one. Um, I put I put these pictures of Columbus here. Heroic Christopher Columbus, not heroic Christopher Columbus, to help you see that these are different interpretations, and that's exactly what I want you to get out of the readings and to start thinking about. Journal one asks you to think about these same issues um, in the context of Christopher Columbus. What gets commemorated about the past? Why and how? And I encourage you to remember that this class is about your interpretation of the past. And so to that end, the journal one assignment, you're gonna actually start with some free writing, which is where you just write for a while. You don't worry about what you're saying or if it's right or wrong. We're, we're just free writing. So you do one page of free writing, then, um, on that, so on that first page of free writing, here's some questions for you to write about. Don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about if you're right or wrong. Just write. Then I'm gonna have you watch a couple more, a couple little videos. In one, Christopher Columbus is a hero. In one, he's a villain. Then I'll have you write a more formal reflection. I've given you instructions for how to cite and. What I want you to do is just follow these instructions where you're arguing for one point of view, then another point of view, and then for your own point of view. So, to conclude, do not hesitate to uh, contact me with any questions, comments, uh, anything like that. I'm here for you. You can message me on Canvas. You can email me at ddomico at francis.edu. And uh, have fun doing some history.